Do you want to know seven reasons why Canelo Alvarez versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is not easy work? If so, stay tuned to this video. I was wondering. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel. And I'm back with my original series, Boxing Ego Seven Reasons. Now, in the words of radio DJ and personality Funk Flex, be clear. I want to be clear. This is not a prediction video. So if you clicked on it thinking it's an actual fight prediction where I'm taking a side and I'm picking, then this is not the right video. I will, however, do a prediction video on this particular fight. It's not till Cinco de Mayo weekend, May 6th, so I have plenty of time. But the reason and purpose for this video is I'm reading a lot of commentary and comments where fans are saying this is just a walk in the park for Canelo. Now, I get it to a degree just because Canelo, career-wise, he's had less ups and downs. Obviously, his big up would be probably beating Cotto and his big down would be losing to Mayweather at age 23. So, in terms of finesse and technique and stuff like that, I get it. Canelo has showed that so far he's the better fighter or has the career. If you could pick somebody's life or a career, you would probably want Canelo's. Making good money, not necessarily revered as a failure. But to count Chavez Jr. out of this fight is, in my opinion, a gross mistake and an error because I think there's plenty for a competitive fight. Not saying he beats Canelo because, again, I'll say that for the seven reasons why whoever beats whoever prediction video so i have a list of seven reasons why i think this is going to be more competitive than a lot of people are thinking it's in no particular order without further ado let's get it in number one pride is on the line now the reason this is important to me is if you know boxing and boxing history there are certain rivalries that almost bring the best out of the competition and the competitors you could easily say that Sergey Kovalev, he fought a hometown fight. He was easily supposed to win against Isaac Chalimba, and he struggled a little bit. But then he came and he got up for the uh, the opponent in Andre Ward, an Olympic gold medalist, American last American gold medalist. And he put up a, a damn good fight, and a lot of people said Kovalev won that fight. So when you raise the level of competition, then usually you get both like opponents I guess in their best physical form because of pride and they know what's at stake right you look at Danny Garcia some people say he has some gift decisions in there but you notice when Danny Garcia fought people he was supposed to lose to oftentimes he beat him Eric Morales you can say whatever you want oh it's old Eric Morales but he was still a champion in the first fight right and nobody even knew who Danny Garcia was unless you really remember the amateur circuit and followed his whole career or from Philly right and he beat eric morales more importantly later in his career he beat guys stylistically that would give him issue zab judas guys like lucas matisse people said lucas was gonna knock his head off and that didn't happen in fact he's the one that got knocked down in the fight matisse did so the point being is people usually step it up when they're in a rivalry now if you follow boxing for a while you'll notice there are certain fights that there's an inherent rivalry there and Mexico versus Puerto Rico have given us some of the greatest fights that I've seen. You know what I mean? The Antonio Margarito versus Miguel Cotto. And then you have black on black, like two black fighters that are in prime around the same age. And a lot of times those fights are super competitive. Like it, it doesn't matter. Like Broner, when he fought Emmanuel Taylor at home, that was a that was a tough fight. You know what I mean? No one wanted to give the other person an inch. And you look at um, some of the Mexico versus Mexico fights like Oscar De La Hoya versus Fernando Vargas, Bad Blood. And one of my all-time favorites, Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera. You know what I mean? All-time classic trilogy. And it was about where you're from and who you're rooting for. And you had the Mexican populace and just boxing fans in general split. You know what I'm saying? If you're from Tijuana, then you probably rock it with this person. If you're from Mexico City, then you rock it with this person. And I really think with Canelo and Chavez Jr., you're gonna see that type of split where fans 
have to pick a side almost you know what i mean who are you rocking with and it's it's good for boxing because if it's a one-sided like most people aren't giving jeff horn any chance versus pacquiao so there's not really going to be a, much of a split but in good fights you usually expect that so i strongly believe that with pride on the line i think we'll we'll in turn get the best out of canelo and also the best out of chavez jr making this fight more competitive than some people think number two Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.'s chin. You could say whatever you want about the man. Say he's lazy. He disappointed you. He got knocked out by Fonfara. But one thing I have not heard anybody say or bash is that man's chin. That dude has a chin, right? And you can look at even fights where he lost or fights where he got stopped. The only fight, which is Andres Fonfara. From far as not necessarily the biggest puncher, Chavez Jr. took that off of a long layoff. He was dealing with a lawsuit with top rank trying to be released from his contract. And after over a year, he finally got out of that top rank contract, signed with Al Heyman. His dad, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr., Mexican legend, said, don't take this from far fight. This is dangerous and you've been on a long layoff and haven't really controlled your weight and things like that. Chavez Jr. being hard-headed, stubborn, said, I know dad I got this did the fight at light heavyweight which you have to you have to imagine when he had before his last time in the ring he wasn't at light heavyweight and then he had that legal issue with top rank then he moved up to light heavyweight and I believe he missed weight for that particular fight in the fun far fight so against his father's wishes he still took that fight and to me what I seen I seen a Chavez jr. that was getting broken down systematically I don't think Fonfara is the hardest punching light heavyweight. I don't think that. I think he has solid power that you can respect, but I don't think he's the hardest like a Kovalev, Better Biev, Adonis Stevenson, anything like that. I don't see that. But he boxed well, and he Chavez Jr. couldn't have his way with him like some of the smaller guys that he had fought in the past, where Chavez Jr. can just walk them down because they're equal size or smaller, like Brian Vera, things like that. Fonfara wasn't having it, and using the Polish boxing school, he, he boxed well and systematically broke him down. And to me, what I seen was a frustrated Chavez Jr. Not saying the punches didn't hurt or anything like that, but he was getting broken down and he wasn't able to get on the inside because he wasn't out boxing from far. And after several punches deep into the fight, he basically got knocked down and he ended up quitting. Probably conditioning had something to do with that too, right? And that that was a tribute to his poor training and preparation and probably relying on his chin too much and a long layoff like i said he was dealing with the top rank lawsuit and a culmination of those things he got knocked down and he survived around and then he basically pulled a no moss moment where he's like nah nah i'm done i'm i'm not trying to have no more but even even with that he didn't get laid out you know what i'm saying put on a stretcher I mean, actually, he did get put on a stretcher to check him out as a precaution. But what I mean is he didn't get, like, knocked out like Marquez knocked out Pacquiao. That's my point. So I do think Chavez Jr. has a hell of a chin, right? Take it back to Sergio Martinez. Martinez laid Paul Williams out, right, in, in a brutal fashion. And I'm a huge Punisher Paul Williams fan. And that was brutal to watch. Single shot, thudding power, southpaw, slick, hands down fast fast hands fast feet martinez is a beast one of my favorites maravilla and for 11 rounds chavez jr had no answer for sergio martinez martinez did whatever he wanted whenever he wanted for 11 whole rounds and chavez jr having he had to have a chin because i seen the pictures of his face after and he looked horrible black eye busted up face and lip and cut and bruising and reddish purple I mean, he was getting tore up by Sergio, and he still had enough energy after taking all of that punishment versus Martinez to nearly stop Sergio Martinez in the 12th round, similar to Chavez Jr. versus Meldrick Taylor. So one thing that I noticed, and Canelo is a solid puncher, but his style is not like Sergio Martinez at all. I don't even see why people would even compare compare that. But I'll get to that a little bit later. But overall, Chavez Jr., he has a chin. He has a man-style chin. 
And I don't think that's going anywhere, even with the Fafara stoppage loss. In at number three, Canelo's a boxer puncher. So the thing with Canelo being a boxer puncher is that's good, but he also fights in spurts from what I've seen where he's he's kind of carefully picking his shots. I've seen him get aggressive, but it was with a certain level of opposition, like like a or a certain style, I guess you would say, like Edislandi Lada. He got kind of aggressive with the body work and stuff like that. But I have a hard time believing that he's going to go away from the boxer puncher role against a guy who's taller than him and a known come for a pressure fighter. He did do it and he was aggressive and I think he surprised Alfredo and Gulo in their fight because the first round he came out aggressive and just started mopping up Angulo. But it's a little bit different because Chavez Jr. at the very least is a bigger version of Angulo, a guy who's a come forward brawler type. And to me, I think there's certain things that Chavez Jr., aside from his, his vitals and, and like reach and measurement and stuff like that, there's some things I think he probably does better than Angulo. I would say his hands are probably not as slow as Angulo. And I think that Chavez Jr., at that point, or at this point, I think he's a better body puncher. So Canelo being a boxer puncher, he's going to have to think in there because he is in there with a bigger person. And he's kind of economical and selective with his punches unless he has you badly hurt a la James Kirkland. And then he'll he'll try to finish you and stuff like that. But that style, we've seen, like I just said, Sergio Martinez dominate him for 11 rounds. And Sergio is a bicyclist who's always riding bikes. You watch the 24-7s and stuff. And he, he used to play soccer too. So he's just an overall super athletic guy right and he's more lean more light on his feet and things like that canelo i wonder if he has the stamina to do that because sergio martinez like i said he used to go on like decathlons and get his lance armstrong on and and go on like tour de forces and and things like that so i don't know i don't know how canelo's cardio would be trying to fight the bigger man and fight him off and ward him off Number four, Canelo is coming off of an injury and a hand injury at that. His right thumb was hurt in his his fight with Liam Smith. Liam Smith, also a taller fighter, a guy taller than him. But it's a bit different because Liam Smith, he's, I guess, a pressure fighter. But no one had really even seen Liam Smith on this side of the pond. So it's kind of hard to gauge. I've seen, for better or worse, I've seen tons of Chavez fights. Brian Vera, one and two. Mata Villa, his fight with Marco Reyes, his fight with Funfara, his fight with uh, Manfredi, his fight with Marco Antonio Rubio. I've seen like all of his fights almost since he's become like a name or famous or whatnot. So Canelo coming off injury, that does concern me because again, Chavez Jr. has a fucking chin and he has a, a relentless style. And I seen Andy Lee outboxing the hell out of Chavez Jr. early. But if you can't get him out of there, sometimes people do. And I've seen this with Conor McGregor, too, when he fought Nate Diaz. When you just fight somebody who's tough and that fucking durable and taller than you and relentless, sometimes you exhaust yourself because you're, you're, you're putting too much steam on it or you're throwing too many punches and they're just keep coming and it's discouraging. And it, if they're walking you down, it's like no matter what you throw, it forces the fighter to to go into their energy reserves and or be creative because you got to do this for depending on what round it is you got to do this for three four maybe five six more rounds so that's what's interesting to me and i think this will will be interesting with with canelo he's had some past stamina issues i haven't seen him recently but then again i've never seen someone who's as big as chavez jr with the constant pressure with the chin of chavez jr who's going to apply that type of pressure Guys that arguably beat Canelo, like Edislandi Lada or Floyd Mayweather, who definitely beat Canelo, they weren't applying a constant, non-stop pressure. There were spots where Floyd was walking Canelo down. I give Floyd that, being the smaller man. But it's not the same way Chavez Jr. fights. Chavez Jr. is not known for defense, and he's going to apply a constant pressure. 
So it's going to be interesting because just like I said with Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz, you don't want to blow your wad, so to speak, and exhaust all of your energy trying to keep this man off, throwing every single punch that you have. It's going to be interesting. And coming off of an injury, a hand injury at that, it's going to be interesting because Chavez Jr. just looks like he has a thick skull, like a just a hard ass head. And you just keep hitting something, hitting the target, and pow, pow, and and they're not going down. Then things could get real interesting real quick. Number five, Canelo has slow footwork. Now, this is one of the things I've seen in the comment section heavy. Lots of comments about this. People are falsely... This is what I hate in boxing. People always give credit to other fighters for another fighter's fight or game plan that's not how boxing works triangle theories never really work in boxing you look at tim bradley he beat pacquiao the first time whether you agree or disagree whatever then he lost twice to pacquiao right bradley beat juan manuel marquez and i thought he did it pretty easily right it was it was it was clear who won i thought he clearly won right marquez gives Pacquiao fits every single time that they fight, every time. But he easily lost to Bradley and then ends up knocking Pacquiao out. So, I mean, if you study boxing enough, you could do this all day. There's tons of fights where fighter X, Y, and Z did this, but later on they they did this. It just, it doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? Cotto beat Shane Mosley, right? Cotto lost to Antonio Margarito in the first fight and got, that was like, he got pummeled. But then Shane Mosley beat the shit out of Antonio Margarito. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really equate to that. And another thing that I think a lot of casual fans and fans don't look deep enough because they're too invested in national pride or emotion or I hate that guy. He has a bad rap or this and that. You got to look at the fight, right? And I'm seeing a lot of people comparing Canelo to Sergio Martinez fight. That's that's a no no because they don't even fight alike to me. When I when I look at them, there's certain people that are like similar. You could say like, oh, Brandon Rios, he's he has more in common with Ruslan Provotnikov than he has with Floyd Mayweather. So even if it's a comparison like that, I would understand it. Even though there's subtle things that they probably do different. But when you take Madavia and Canelo Alvarez, totally different fights. I've never seen one time Canelo fight with his hand at his waist for consecutive rounds and large chunks of a fight. But I've seen Martinez do that, similar to Roy Jones Jr., right? I've never seen some some feints that Sergio Martinez does. I haven't seen Canelo do that, especially with his hands down at his waist and then just be fainting with his head. I haven't really seen Canelo do stuff like that for large chunks of fights, but I've always seen Martinez do that. Sergio Martinez is also a southpaw. Canelo is an orthodox fighter. I don't know who has more power because Sergio Martinez was strong and Canelo is strong. And we haven't seen Canelo above like 155. We've seen Sergio Martinez fight guys that were bigger and fight guys at 160 and stop them. Matthew Macklin, Darren Barker, and he busted up Chavez Jr.'s face. And then more importantly, this is probably the most important difference is like I said earlier, Martinez has a set of legs that he uses fluidly to navigate about. Canelo has slow feet. Canelo has to be locked, loaded, and kind of in place to do his best work. He has to cut you off. If he gets you on the ropes, you might be toast. If you, you're you standing flat-footed just in front of him and he can just get off with his fast hands, he does have fast hands, but he has slow feet. So that's the biggest difference. So when I'm looking at it, Canelo's slow footwork, that makes it a different puzzle entirely than Martinez. Because as Chavez Jr. was trying to track Martinez down, Martinez kept moving and causing him to reset. Martinez was doing just lateral movement, standing and trading, getting some punches off. Then he'll go back to using his legs and he knows how to navigate around the ring. He's also in the southpaw position, which is difficult because you have to anticipate the, the, the punches coming at a different trajectory than an orthodox fighter. And Martinez just know he, he was very experienced. He lost early to Antonio Margarito. 
He had an epic war with Paul Williams. Then he came back and knocked Williams out. He had a war with Kermit Centron in a great fight. So he's very experienced. Canelo is still like 26-ish, and he doesn't have the footwork that Martinez had. I'm sorry. He just doesn't. So Canelo having slow feet, if he gasses, if he tires, if he can't find the creative sequence of punches to get Chavez out of there and he's starting to fatigue and get tired from punching a big man and he doesn't have the footwork. Like I said, Sergio knows his way around the ring. He's unorthodox and tricky with, with that. He's crafty with his feet. So he knows the escape routes and how long he could stay in this position and when you're coming, stuff like that. Canelo having slow feet. If he normally, and this is this is why it's kind of interesting. Canelo actually does good with Chavez Jr.'s style, like a guy who comes forward, like James Kirkland, and he struggles with guys that move like like a Martinez would trouble him, Edison Lada, Floyd Mayweather, Austin Trout. Those guys are going to trouble him. But the thing is, now he's doing it. It's not against an undersized person. It's not against Josecito Lopez, right? It's not against Matthew Hatton or Ryan Rose. This is against a full-fledged guy who's even fought at light heavyweight. And on fight night, he might rehydrate to something crazy, 196 or whatever crazy amount. So Canelo having slow feet, if this goes late, which it probably will because Chavez Jr. has a chin, like I said earlier, it's going to get real interesting because then it would be two flat-footed fighters. So it might be a battle of attrition, like who can outlast the other one and wear the other one down late in the fight, right? It's going to be two people with slow feet. In at number six, Lazy Chavez underestimated. Now, what I mean by that is we all know the good and the bad. If you're a fan of, of his father, Julio Cesar Chavez, you probably watched his son because if you're like me, I'm a big fan of his father and I just wanted to see Chavez Jr. do good just out of respect for his dad, right? And I think that element of him might be underestimated because People are just art. He not ha he literally to me has nothing to lose. What does he have to lose? People already think you're a fuck up, right? You've been inactive. You had an injury. You've already been stopped. You have blemishes on your record, right? You lost the biggest fights of your of your career, like the Martinez fight, the comeback fight from far. So I, I really feel like Chavez Jr. may be underestimated. It's easy to say whatever in the public like oh no we're expecting the best version of chavez jr but behind closed doors are you truly expecting that you know what i mean and it's hard and and to team canelo's credit and all the fans it's i don't blame them because he's had a troubled roller coaster emotional roller coaster of like different occurrences ups and downs and stuff like that like the andy lee is probably my favorite chavez jr performance right but he had a dui in that camp right martinez a lot of people were picking him they thought they, after the face off like yeah chavez got this and i know people that are picking him i picked martinez and i was right right i said decision because i knew chavez jr had a chin and he didn't even he fell way short of expectations even with that 12th round because he he got abused for 11 rounds right so it's just like that's cool but just like the movie apocalypto almost when he said almost, when he called that dude almost, almost doesn't really cut it. You almost had Sergio Martinez out, but you couldn't finish him. And then he went on to win. And I mean, obviously it messed up his career though, because he, he hurt his knee in that fight and he never looked the same against Martin Murray and Cotto and stuff. But that's neither here nor there. The bottom line is to me, Chavez Jr. is the one that has a lot less risk in this fight because people are already expecting him to do bad, which is the point of this video. So to me, he has nothing to lose. He's already considered the guy who, who's shameful and not living up to his dad's name, lazy, undisciplined. We've seen it on 24-7. He's eating cereal. He's eating Cocoa Puffs and Lucky Charms and his pink chonies. Like, he's, he failed a drug test for weed. He balloons up in weight. You know what I'm saying? His career is already the one that's, like, frowned upon more so than Canelo. So I think... It's easy for Team Canelo and their game plan to kind of anticipate that, like, oh, he's going to, especially since this fight's at a catch weight of 164.5, it's easy, very easy. You look at it, and you're like, oh, he probably can't even make weight. That's why they took the weight down to 164.5 from 165. 165 might even be killing Chavez Jr. to make, right? But 
here's the thing. What if Chavez Jr., and this is a big if, I might be way off the mark, I'm just telling you guys. But what if Chavez Jr., he heard all the gripes, he heard all the complaints, he heard all the disappointment and the criticism. Oh, he can't make weight, he's a failure, he's nothing like his father. What if he heard that and he actually prepares right? Then it's a whole different fucking fight, right? If he makes weight and he has plenty of time to do it, and the good thing for him is he just fought Dominic Bridge in Monterrey, Mexico in December so he already had to make 168 so he had to get his weight down to make that so i know he was supposed to fight badu jack and he pulled out with injury things like that the weed all that but at the end of the day if he comes prepared which is a big question mark it's just like mario brothers when when he mario's underneath that box and has a question mark that's chavez jr but the wild card is what if he does prepare like he's supposed to be preparing because he's heard all the criticism and he, he really comes, then that underestimation could come back to bite Team Canelo in the butt. And the seventh and final reason. Drum roll, please. Canelo is moving up double digits in weight. Even with the catch weight of 164.5, he just fought his very last fight at 154. And I think that's huge. Because on top of the things that I said, like Chavez is tough, he has a chin, he showed that he's durable, moving up in weight is no joke. I've seen fighters move up in weight and instantly lose, and they looked unbeatable in their previous division. Look at Adrian Broner, for example. He was tearing guys up at 130, 135, Jason Litzow, Vicente Escobedo. Um, his, my favorite Broner performance was Antonio DeMarco. A champion at the time, lightweight champion, chopped him up. Then he moved up two divisions and fought against Pauly Malignaggi. And Pauly's not even the biggest puncher. Tough fight for him. Split decision win. Some people thought Pauly won that fight. Very next fight, got thrashed by Chino Maidana, another one of my favorites. So moving up in weight is no joke. Where Broner's power looked crazy at 30 and 35, guys could deal with his power a little bit better when he moved up to welterweight. And even 140. So Canelo's moving up past the regular middleweight mark to almost super middleweight. 164 is, is pretty much in between the two. Almost as close as you can. It would have been at 165, which would have been dab smack in the middle. But they changed it wanting to use their A-side leverage and have some kind of advantage. So they changed it to 164.5, which is still midway. You know what I mean? So he's moving up a lot of weight against a durable guy. So I'm telling you guys, if Chavez Jr. really comes, and I think Chavez Jr. truly wants to get the Mexican public's favor. And if he comes correct, this is going to be a real difficult fight where we might even see an upset. To me, I view boxing, so it's not even a huge upset. Just like Ronda Rousey, people call both of her losses upsets. Those weren't upsets to me. Because I knew what Holly Holm could do. And I knew Ronda Rousey didn't have a stand-up game. Same thing with Nunes. I knew she was a powerful striker who's not going to be discouraged. So that's the seven reasons why I believe this will be a very competitive fight. A lot more competitive than some of you guys are saying in the comment section. That's just my thoughts. Just my thoughts, people. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your fight predictions below. And we shall see. I will drop a seven reasons to give an actual fight prediction. But I still got to study some tape and decide where I want to go with this because this is not a walkover opponent. Cinco de Mayo, it's a, a known Mexican-American holiday here in the States. And I think pride is going to be huge. And pride could will whatever winner to a victory. And this could be a battle of attrition, battle of chins, and um, who has the better body work and who can endure more. And it's everything on the line. So let me know what you guys think. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., will this be competitive with Canelo or is Canelo just far too skilled? Drop that in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Oh,